Okay, so I have my um, gosh, bleed shim right here, as you can see. It is a, and I use my micrometer, uh, get close to the camera again, with my micrometer. Let me make sure it's at zero, zeroed out. Okay, this is the bleed shim here. My bleed shim is 0.2, call it 0.2 millimeters in thickness, and make sure it's center if possible. So basically, its 30 diameter is 36.5, 36.5 millimeters there. Now, the equivalent, closest equivalent I have, is a 0.2, 36 outside diameter. And um, I actually have this on the front of my vehicle now, the same profile, and it's actually pretty decent. It's pretty good. I enjoy it. Um, I have it with 14k springs, so it's more of a 70% track oriented setup and 30% street in my opinion and how it handles um, bumps on the road. Taking turns, it's awesome. I'm going to try switching that up or lowering the springs down to a 10 kilogram per millimeter spring and see how that goes with the same shock profile. Now here I have the standard shim that I'm going to use. 0.2 millimeter, 36 millimeter diameter. Uh, bear with me guys, sorry. 0.2 millimeter. If you look there. And 36, call it 36 millimeters. So it's 0.5 millimeters shorter. If you ask me, it's pretty darn close, almost the same thing. So I'm going to go ahead and put this bleach him to the side, put that to the side. And I'm inserting it in the exact same place on the shim stack that the bleach him was at. I'm going to put it back on the piston. But first, I want to show you the difference visually between the Bill Stein piston and and the uh, BC Racing piston. I'm gonna make sure I gotta change that bleach shim too. I'm gonna change this bleach shim as well. Okay, but if we look here side by side, Bill Stein COB piston without the check plate and stop stop spring plate and uh, and check plate. So on on the BC Racing, I believe these small ports, small orifices were used for the rebound side and the inlet portion of them and the large orifice inlets were used for the compression yeah and so with the this is not a 50-50 this I'm sorry this is is not a 50-50 uh, piston if you look on the compression orifices there's more more fluid is allowed to pass versus the rebound orifices hence the rebound orifices would give you uh, drastically more force than the compression with this piston already as is without um factoring in the shim stacks. They're not 50-50. On the Bilstein, it's 50-50. Now this is the new standard piston. They have an old, older standard piston which is on the website. Let me show you, or on the uh, on the forum post. I'm going to show you that right now. And this is the standard piston here, Bilstein on the left, that's the BC Racing on the right. Yeah, it's the old-fashioned one. Uh, B46-699A, I think, is that part number for the Bilstein one. Alright, so now I'm going to replace the the bleed shim on the rebound side of an equivalent and put it back together. Alright, now I'll let you guys know, and I'll show you how the uh, process goes. Another thing I wanted to comment on is on the BC Racing BR coilover. It actually comes, hold on if I can get this on. Well, where this is at, this was not in this place. This thick gold plated um, piece here was oriented in this fashion where the holes would force, force the fluid out this way. And this piece was actually on the bottom where the lock nut, or the shock lock nut, or shock nut is, um, would be. 
when I went with the Bilstein guideline, I did not utilize this at all. I stuck solely with this gold back thinner gold back stop plate and put that here, so that when I take my uh, when I take my Bilstein arrangement here, shimmer arrangement, it will go right onto it. That fat BC Racing one, I believe, would hinder the flex of these shims. That's why I didn't go that route. I opted not to use it. Yeah. So just a little tidbit there. But I'm um, just showing you here, I'm piecing this back together. All right. Following step by step. Yeah. I want to put on my, finish it off with my uh, two Home Depot washers. Take my nut here, try and get the washers as center as possible. And when doing this, you want to try and keep a, keep keep your environment clean. Um, lint free, I probably wasn't the best showing that, but lint free, especially dirt and grit, you don't want that inside your shock. It's like sandpaper. Uh, as the shock is moving up and down over time, it'll just grind away at all kinds of innards of the shock, and that's not what you want. So I'm keeping this here, trying to center this keeping these um, two wash, thick washers as center as possible um, and where is my hex socket and now that I have that I'm going to tighten it back I've replaced those bleed shims okay that's good you want it firm tight not super duper tight but you want it snug firm a little bit more on the firm side here are my two bleed shims they're out of here and I'll have the uh, regular shims in their place. That will give me more force in the low speed. Okay, so I got that together. Now what I got to do is take this butt plate of the sh shock butt plate and this sliding piston with these seat clamps and put it back in the shock. Alright, so I'll show that next. Okay, so now I'm going to show how to get your sliding piston right where it needs to be. Um, I'm going to utilize in this process a broken broomstick. You can use a stick, you can use a, a wrench, whatever is long enough to, to reach the point. But the purpose of this is uh, I'm going to put a tick mark on this stick to indicate where I need to get this sliding piston at to be dead center between the uh, shaft nut and the butt plate of the shock. Alright, so I'm going to go ahead and start that process here. Alright, so first things first, face concave face up towards the shaft nut. This is the sliding piston. It goes in like so. Okay, there we go. Now, what I'm going to do is get this is no oil of course but put my shaft with piston in the shock put my wiper seal in and also the uh, dust cap here get that on come on really there we go get that on so I'm simulating the purpose of this is to sim simulate the shock at its true full compression So. Okay, got that in place. So now, as I push on the shaft here, I want to get it as close, this ring as close to the rubber, basically touching it without sliding into the black rubber that surrounds. You don't want that. Because keep in mind, realistically, there's going to be a bump stop in the way. So I got it right where I want it. And that's where the sliding piston is. So now, I'm going to get a blade, or if you have a, a regular wooden stick, you can use a pen on the stick to mark to mark the distance you have, the gap distance you have in here. So this will give me this is actually contacting, making contact, sliding piston is making contact with the 17 millimeter shaft nut. Realistically, where I put this tick mark, I'm actually going to put that sliding piston a little below it. Okay, so I have my tick mark where it is. It makes contact and touches. When I, I'm going to pull everything back out, 
get the sliding piston um, back in this body according to the tick mark, but not fully at the tick mark. I'm going to actually have it, the tick mark a little bit out. Give it gap, a gap between the um, shock shaft and the butt plate. The purpose of doing this basically is to try and get the sliding piston in the middle of, like I said, the 17 millimeter locking nut and the butt plate. So I'm going to go ahead and loosen this up here and pull my shock shaft back out. Okay, there we go. So now I know the limits of my sliding piston. So I get my stick and I want to find the halfway point between where I put the tick mark at and the top of this. So I want to get a halfway point there. And that's how much I want to push this sliding piston into the shock body. So that's about halfway. Uh, that's good. Right, that's about halfway. So now I'm going to use this to push my piston. Keep in mind this is the top of the BC Racing BR shock body right here. This is the bottom. I'm going to push it from the top out to the bottom so that it's flat with the shock body. Keep it nice and flat. So now where I just made my second tick mark which is in the middle, my goal is to push it in, tap it in to that point, not the first tick mark. Okay, I'm about right there. Okay, I'm good. So I'm about right there. Now, granted, this is, um, <laughs> most people would say like this is a backyard way of doing it, but hey, these are the tools that I have right now at my disposal, so. And it worked on what's on my car right now, so I love it. Okay. So you can even, technically you can even push it, if you want, instead of 50-50, push it 75% in. And have a 25% gap between that sliding piston and this shock shaft nut right here. It's up to you. For me, I'll put it at 50-50. Just keep in mind when you push the needle in, um, you might make contact with uh, the metal. So you don't have to jam it in. Just enough to break into this chamber. Air chamber here is fine. Okay. So now that we have that, let me show you the rest. Hold on.